Hello, in this video we are going to derive the quadratic formula. That is this formula up here, which a lot of you may have seen already. It's a formula that's extremely useful to solve quadratic equations. All the equations we've solved so far using factorization could have been done with this. Um, factorization is usually a bit easier though, and faster. If it's, po if it's possible to do it, if you were able to do it, do it that way. But this is a solve everything method. In the last video, we learned how to solve all of them by completing the square. This is the same as completing the square, except we get a formula that's easier to use. A little easier to use anyway. <laughs> this, um, this formula should always be accompanied with this line. This line tells us what we can solve. Anything that looks like this can be solved using this. That is, a number multiplied by x squared plus a number multiplied by x plus a number equals zero. Now these could be minuses, by the way. That just means b is minus. Plus minus two is the same as minus two. And uh, sorry, one exception here. A, a cannot equal zero. Um, that's, that'd be the only exception. B, it's okay if b is zero. This will still solve correctly. If C is zero, this will still solve correctly. But if A is zero, well, this is easy anyway. The answer is X is equal to minus C divided by B. The reason A equals zero would be a problem is because you cannot divide by A. But anyway, okay, so let's jump into this. Let's derive this. I think this is really useful for students to see, even though a lot of you will never need this, um, in any exam at least, you will use the equation a lot. So I think it's good that a student sees where it comes from. I am not just making this up. Somebody else did not just make this up. They figured it out. And you can figure it out too. I will show you how to do it right now. In the last video, I used an identity. I'm going to use that as well. So just before I start, I guess I'll write this identity out. I, X, I, I used A last time. I, I better use a different letter because I already have A here, x plus p squared is equal to x squared plus 2px plus p squared. Okay, this is just, remember, anything squared is just multiplied by itself. So that's x plus p multiplied by x plus p. I won't bother writing it all out. We did it in the last video. Um, x multiplied by x x squared, there will be an x by a p and a p by an x. Both of them are px, so that's 2px. And then there will be a p multiplied by a p, p squared. This is useful because anything that looks like this can be wrote like this. We can get rid of a lot of x's. Or we can simplify it down maybe is a better way to think of it. This is difficult to solve, there's too many x's. This is 1x. Remember, our goal at the end, somewhere down here, I want to get x equals. I want to get x equals. So this is going to be useful. And in fact, I'm going to make an equation look like this. It looks like this now, but I'm going to make it look like this. All right, let's start. And we're going to start with um, what we're given in a question. Something that looks like this. A number x squared plus a number multiplied by x plus a number equals zero. <clears throat> now, if I can make this look like this, I can simplify it down. If you don't understand me, stay watching, we'll see. Rewind it, watch it again. Rewind it, pause it, think about it, watch it again. That's the power of watching videos online. You can pause it, you can do it at your own speed. Okay, one big problem here, the first problem I see is x squared. This is a x squared. Well, that's easy to solve x squared plus b over a, x plus c over a equals zero. What did I do? I divided everything by a, divided by a, divided by a, divided by a, even zero I divided by a. Zero divided by a is zero. Okay, so this is the same equation. Again, I'm, not, I'm allowed to do this because a is not equal to zero. Good thing, I'm a, good thing that's there, otherwise I couldn't have done that. Right, um, next problem is, there's no 2. 
That's an easy one to solve. X squared plus, hmm, how do I solve it? Let's think about it. Well, I want a two. How about I just put a two in? That's, that's not very fair. Unless I divide it by two again. This hasn't changed anything. Two divided by two is just one. One multiplied by anything hasn't changed it. Um, let me see, plus c over a equals zero. Okay, other ways you might have thought maybe you can multiply everything by two. Then I would get a problem here. I, I just got rid of an a. I don't want to put a two back there. So this, I think this is the, well, it is the solution in this case. But you can always do this. If you ever want to multiply something by two, go ahead. Once you divide it by two again, there's no problem. You might not help yourself, but you won't hurt yourself. Right, so this is now looking a little like this. Let's see, x squared plus two times b over two a. That's, I've just moved this around a little. So it looks a little more like this, x plus c over a equals zero. Right, now we're starting to look like it. We have x squared, ooh, we do not. And uh, we have x squared, we have two multiplied by a number, multiplied by, this is a word, it doesn't look like a number, but it is. b divided by two a is a number. Yeah, think of it like um, if these were real numbers, think of it, eight divided by two fours is eight, so it's one. Nine divided by two sevens, nine divided by 14, which is simply 0 0.6 something, so something like that. So it is a number, but just, it just looks a bit stranger with letters. Do not worry too much about that. Or try and get your head around it, maybe. So two times a number times x, two times a number times x. Right, we're missing the p squared. Remember, p is this bracket. We're missing this bracket squared. So that's a problem. x squared plus two times b over two a. So let me make this a little smaller. This line is gonna get a bit big on me, or maybe it's the next line. x squared plus two times b over two a x. What I would really like to be here is the whatever's here squared. Whatever here squared. This is what I would love to be here. That would be great. That would make it look like this. So you know what? If I, And there's still a CA here. Plus C over A equals zero. So if I want this to be here, that's fine. I can get away with that. I can cheat again in maths. I like cheating. All I have to do is take it away. I wanted a two to multiply, so I multiplied by two. I just made sure to divide again. I want to add on b divided by 2a squared, that's fine. I just need to take it away again. I added it on here, I take it away here. I haven't changed anything. Eight minus eight is zero. A million minus a million is zero. I can do this whenever I want. But look, what's, look why I've done it. I now have made it look like this. x squared plus two times a number x plus that number squared. This big complicated thing that has all the x's in them can be rewrote like this. x, x plus p squared, x plus b over two a squared, x plus this number in here, this number here, this number here, this number here. I can rewrite all of that like that. Remember these numbers are still here, minus b over two a squared plus c over a equals zero. I've got, I've got this equation. It looks, I've made it bigger and messier. I know that, I know people do not like that, but I've got this equation and finally I've got the x on its own. Not quite on its own yet, but separated from everyone else, much easier. My goal at the end has it fully on its own. Right, let's, uh, let's change a few more things. B of x plus b over 2a, all squared. Let's add this to both sides. Equals b over 2a squared. Let's take this from both sides. Minus c over a, sorry, equals zero. I already have an equals. 
Okay, I just added this to both sides, took that away from both sides. What else I need to get rid of? I need to get rid of the squared. X plus B over 2A is equal to square root of B over 2A squared minus C over A. With one little added thing, plus or minus. Be very careful, you remember to put this into questions when you do this. Uh, I'll do a little example down here. Uh, x squared is equal to 4. Remember what this is asking. It's asking what number multiplied by itself is equal to 4. Well, the answer is 2. Or is it? Um, what about minus 2? Minus 2 multiplied by minus 2 is also 4. So questions like this, or like this, something squared is equal to, so x is equal to the square root of 4. But the square root of 4 is 2, it's definitively 2, it's not plus or minus 2. So we need to add in the plus or minus ourselves. So if we want to get the square root of something, square root always gives a positive number. But we, we know, we ourselves know that the answer could be a plus or a minus. So we need to remember to put that in. Unless the question tells you it's bigger than zero, we need to put that in. Right, what have we got here? Let's see. Um, you know what, let's clean this up. This, uh, you might not think to do this right now. I'm, I'm going to need to do it to make it look like this. But it's something you should probably do anyway. You have two numbers added together. Can we just put them together? Can we add these two together? Let's find out. Let's see if we manage it. B over 2a is equal plus or minus. Right, well, first of all, let's multiply this out. B, and if we get the square of a bracket, we can get the square of the top row and the square of the bottom row. And if we get the square of two different items, we can do them separately, 4a squared. We'll cover this more when we do indices, powers, indices, and stuff like that. For now, uh, just take my word, I think. Minus C over A. Um, it's going to take a bit of writing, but I, I, I'll spend a few lines cleaning this up. I think I have the space. Uh, I realize I need to start writing bigger over here, though, because I'm getting further from the camera. Plus or minus, the square root... Let's see, b squared over 4a squared. Now here's a little, um, well it's not a little trick, it's something you should probably have learned already. Although when people learn how to add and take away fractions, they tend to like multiply, cross multiply, things like that. I don't teach that, I, don't, I think that's silly. I just point out, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be brilliant if there was a 4a squared here? That's easy to add together. Fractions with the same bottom row are easy. Wouldn't it be great if this was 4a squared? I could add it together really easy. So, so I'll just write 4a squared. The 4 doesn't exist though. So I better, I better balance it out somewhere. I put, in an, an, I put in more a's than there are. There's only one a there. I multiply by two a's. I better balance that out. And the c is still there. That's how I add and take away fractions. You don't have to learn any cross multiply rule. You just get to have to cheat. <laughs> but you need to know what you're doing when you do it. You need to be fair and balanced. Okay, so let's, uh, we can just add these together then. X plus two, uh, B over two A is equal plus or minus square root of, make that a bit bigger. Square root of B squared minus 4ac. Remember, that's how we add our takeaway fractions now. If they have the same bottom row, it's, it's easy. Okay, um, I think we can clean up one more thing. The square root, here I said the, the square of the top and bottom can be done separate. Well, so can the square root. The square root works just like squares do. Uh, let's see, x plus b over, you might not need to write all this. If you knew what was happening, I would write it much faster, but I'm trying to teach lots of things here, I hope. Plus or minus, um, the top row is the square root of b squared minus 4ac. 
the, but the reason I'm separating this is because I looked at the bottom row and I said, you know what, I can make that simpler. I can make that 2a. Square root of 4, 2. Square root of a squared is a. Oh, I'm sorry if that's uh, blending together a bit there. Um, okay, what have we got next? We're nearly finished. X, um, let's... Let's take this from both sides. Minus b over 2a. Let's take b over 2a from both sides. So minus here, minus here, cancels on the left. Plus or minus is still there. Square root, b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. Well, look, we have two things over the, this is another reason I did this. I knew what was gonna happen. We have two things over divided by 2a makes it a lot neater. So x is equal minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by the same thing, 2a. That's it, that's, our, that's what we knew we would get, well we hoped we would get, that's what I told you we would get. This is the equation you're going to use a lot in maths, especially if you did not like factorization or completing the square. You can use this equation a lot. Now, we, we complete the square. That's what this was happening here. Where would that be most clear? Um, up to this point here, we, comp we made a square. This is why it's called completing the square. Gone to this point. That's what helped us solve this. But you don't need to do this for every question. In the next video, we'll just look at some examples with numbers. Instead of an A, we might have a 7. Instead of B, we might have a minus 4, and so on. Any numbers really will work. But with some exceptions, um, we, we, like to get, we like to get minus numbers in the square root. So we like B squared minus 4AC to be bigger than or equal to 0. Because we don't like minus numbers. Now, minus numbers, they still exist. We can draw out the picture. Of, a, of, this, um, of an equation that has a minus in there. We'll do that in a few more videos. We'll start looking at the shape of equations. Um, but yeah, we can, solve, we can solve minus square roots when we get to complex numbers. That'll be another while from now. But really, this can solve every single thing, even if b is zero or c is zero. Okay, I hope that uh, helped. I hope uh, um, you enjoyed seeing where this comes from. A lot of you can sit back now and relax and think, oh, I never have to do that again. That's fine. But hopefully there's one or two of you out there that's like, wow, I like that. I want to do that. Try it yourself. Find other equations you can derive. It's, I find it really fun. I, I love getting out an equation. I love um, going from a mess to a nice, neat equation. Hopefully some of you did as well. Until next time, have a good day and goodbye.